This is Metal Mike, and in this episode, we hear from the main man from Rat, legendary vocalist Steven Piercy. We talk about his upcoming live stream concert. We also hear about some key moments from Rat's past and the current status of the band and its past members. Check it out. Well, Steven, welcome to the 80s Glam Metal Cast. How you doing tonight, man? I'm all good. What's up, brother? Not much. I know we've uh, chatted a little bit uh, through Twitter. It's nice to be talking to you on the phone. Yeah, man. Well, it sounds like you've got some exciting stuff coming up. Steven Percy, alive on the Sunset Strip, April 2nd. Sounds like it's going to kick ass. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Yeah, well, you know, we had this uh, gig for Rats set up for New Year's Eve 2021 and couldn't pull it together. So I just decided, well, my rat bastards will do it. And we'll take the other lane. And, and so I went on with that. And now we have a show we're going to do with my rat bastards at the good old Whiskey A Go Go. And it's going to be a, it's going to be way cool. Have a guest or two coming up and showing up, and we'll see what happens. And I've read you got some pretty top notch guys in the band. Why don't you tell everybody who's in the band with you? Yeah, well, you know the same uh, uh, rat bastards come and go over the years. Eric Ferentino is <laughs> my uh, right hand man in my solo projects and stuff as a co writer and. MD. Uh, he's on lead guitars. He's from a band Anti Division in San Diego. And I have three years, and I've got Frankie Wilsey, who came from originally the Sea Hag, and he was in Arcade in 92 on those two records and tours, and he's been in the Bastards for a while on guitars, and we have Scotty Coogan, who's been who's played with Ace. Uh, most frequently, I think he did a stint with L.A. Guns, and he's back for more on drums. <laughs> I've got a new addition, Jerry Montano, actually, who just got his first gold record for uh, his band, Hell Yeah, with the brothers, and it's all good. He's from Danzig, and, and hell yeah. So uh, we're good to go. We've been rehearsing. A couple more rehearsals to go, and we'll be good. Now, you can't give us any hints about the special guest, right? Well, I've kind of put it out there, you know, that my drummer from rap, Bobby Blotzer, might be showing up. So Sweet. we can count on that, probably. Oh, that's awesome. Well, man, I wish you a lot of luck with that. It sounds like it's going to be great. One thing I noticed mm-hmm. on your website is you're doing this thing called Backstage Pass. Tell everybody about that. It's yeah. pretty cool, man. A lot of cool vintage rat stuff on there. Tell everybody about that. Yeah, it's not just a, a, a rat. I, I've instigated it. We've been in pre-production with that for a while, um, Top Field Records, Inc. And, and what it is, it's a show. Um, you know, I get interviewed so much over the years and, and there's so many other bands and artists who have such a legacy and have sold millions of records, defended the faith and, and who continue, who really don't get, I believe, the recognition that they should. So I've created this per, uh, uh, the show we're going to put into production called Backstage Pass and, and kind of highlight musicians and not just musicians it's uh could be a race car driver sports guy uh movie tv yeah. but pretty much it's going to start with uh the 80s genre of uh musicians uh my company and um it's going to be highlighting these artists for which i think is way you know it's a lot of these artists should be getting some kind of Grammy, getting some sure. kind of Hall of Fame, getting some kind of rock and roll something, <laughs> but they never do. So including us, and I really don't care, but, you know, I'm going to start highlighting and, and giving some people the opportunity to talk about their legacy. And, and so we're looking forward to start filming that within the next uh, couple months. Sweet. Now, is the goal to have that on TV or like webisodes or how do you want to do it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll start out probably uh, on, uh, we're looking at a side TV, ASY TV. I have a docu-series that uh, ASY TV is doing on me, and we've been, actually, this is very cool, and we've been filming stuff for Backstage Past as we're doing this docu-series because I actually take you to, you know, where it all started for me in San Diego with Mickey Rat. I actually go to the old places we used to rehearse, the house, you know, my accident scene, the whole ball of wax. So we're taking you through a trip, and that's what we'll do with uh, 
the other artists too. That sounds cool, man. Very cool. And t- yeah. t- talking about interviews, I, I interview a lot of people and I don't just interview mm. 80s, you know, artists or glam artists. I've interviewed ba- people from heavier bands like Sabotage, Man of War. But when I sure. bring up the question, mm. 80s glam model, man, Rat always comes up. So many of these guys that are into like heavier <laughs> music, they always talk about Stephen Percy and Rat. Does it blow your mind how many different kinds of bands and people you've influenced? You know, I, I think it's great, and I, you know, it's actually a compliment because I'm I'm influenced by. If people knew what music I actually listen to, I mean, I listen to music that'll bash your head into classic to sixties, seventies, all genres like you. You know, um, I have to. I mean, I like to know what's going on. I like to have my ear to the ground, so to speak. And I want to know about new bands and, and more about what inspired me. And so, like you, you know, uh, it, it's nice to have that versatility. But I got to tell you, it's a compliment. And, hey, right back at them, you know. There's a lot of these guys that... Uh, uh, what was that band, uh, Let the Bodies Hit the Floor? It's like, you know, I had this thing going with that singer back in the day, right? I don't think he's no longer with us. Um, if I'm correct, I might be wrong. But he used to call me and, and sing round and round on my phone, right? <laughs> and I used to call him and sing Let the Bodies Hit the Floor. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, there you go right there. You know, one, one hits the other, so... It's kind of cool, you know. I have uh, a lot of respect for some of these other bands, you know, that really don't get the success just because their music's not in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, But I will tell you, you can call me hair metal, anything. Just make sure it's not by check, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I embrace it. You know, I'll embrace it. It doesn't matter to me. You've been there and done it, you know. Yeah, I mean, you you nailed it on the head. A lot of people, there's a stigma. They don't like that word hair metal. But I've embraced it too because, you know, I got into music in the mid to late 80s and there was no such thing as hair metal. You just called it like 80s metal, you know. And and I know it was yeah, a right? negative thing that came out of the grunge scene. But now I feel like it, like, I don't know, I'm proud of it. You know what I mean? I'm proud to say I like hair metal. So I hope people are proud that they play hair metal. So Yeah, and, and you know, there's another thing which I, I think – some of these newer bands that really didn't get to make it in the 80s, you know, they should thank God with all these satellites and whatever streams and all these radio stations like you and everybody else who play these songs. They're being heard more now than they were then. Right. And I don't know if they take that into consideration, but I do all the time. Granted, they'll play one of my songs forever. So, uh, you know, <laughs> but it, when I when, when I hear about, you know, uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, these bands, you know, I just go, wow, you know, they should be really privileged that uh, call yourself hair metal, call yourself whatever they decide next or whoever they whoever they are. Uh, me like you to me it's just me it's just rock music you know yeah. but if you got to embrace it embrace it you know <laughs> most definitely so i got into music probably in the later half of the 80s and two albums of yours that i really connected with was uh reach for the sky and detonator what do you think about mm. those two albums looking back where do you rank them in in your catalog wow good question and i like good questions by the way oh, um they wow that's interesting because we are sidetracked on reach for the sky and that record took a lot to get done besides internally the band was pretty much combusting around that time internally uh not in a good way so that record took some time i like it you know it, it did well just like you know the other ones that was our fifth consecutive platinum record mm-hmm. i believe but yeah. here nor there it's a great record we try i mean all we can do is write and hope it works and you know most of the time it's worked um i love that album reach for the sky detonator i like a little a little more mm-hmm. Because we had, uh, which we tried to do with Reach for the Sky, we tried to get fresh blood in there. Not that we disrespected Bo Hill. I, I love Bo Hill to this day. You know, we have an acquaintance still. 
and much respect. He taught me a lot with production. Um, but we just wanted new blood, you know, and try something different. We felt that we were getting a little too glossy. Even uh, with Dancing Undercover, we tried to get a little rougher, and, you know, and it was a conscious thing, but we couldn't get out of this. Well, we got to polish it up a little bit, you know. <sighs> so we tried to do that with Reach. And then Detonator, we had way fresh blood. We had Desmond Child coming in, not necessarily to be Mr. Hitmaker, just to have new blood and write. And the best experience I've had with that record was uh, writing Giving Yourself Away mm. with Diane Warren and Desmond Child. I mean, to me, that was it was well worth the whole record, just writing with those two amazing writers. And Desmond oversaw the project, and it was good. You know, it did what it did, and, and that's all you can ask for as, our, as the music scene was changing, mm. you know, um, but, you know, Rat always had the, the uh, approach of, you know, write the best songs you could, and that's about it. We, you know, you can't polish a turd, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, as Robin would say, you know, so you, you just write the best music possible, and, and I do the same thing to this day. Any song I write, it's going to be written for Rat, or it'll be written for a solo project, you know, uh, if my writing is way left field, like say a uh, view to a thrill or smash or something, or even the new solo record, which we're going to start recording soon for later release this year, that this record is way heavy. We don't expect any commercialism with this new one. Mm -hmm. It's it maybe we'll hit something, but it's way heavy. And there's no way I can go back and change what we wrote over the last year and a half, Eric and I. So, but those two rat records, they're good records. You know, I think uh, we could have been in a better mind frame, you know, but it is what it is. So, yeah, they're good records. I, I, I have respect for them. They're way different, though, than what a Bow Hill production would be. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned giving yourself away because I, I had that written down. Now, was that a single only in Japan, or was that released in the U.S.? You know, I, ju I was just talking about that song a minute ago. I've been doing interviews, and that song came up, and it, 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 you're, you're right. It was only released. I was just talking about it a second ago. <laughs> that song was released. It's serious. It's, it's fucking crazy. That song was released as a single only in Japan, and they made a video for us in Japan. I think it was the label, because we used to play that song in the set uh, on that tour. So on that last Japan tour, uh, for that record, we literally played it, and they just filmed live footage. And if you see it, YouTube it. It's a great video. It's a great video if you haven't seen it, uh, giving yourself away. But, uh, yeah, and it actually charted and everything else. So, I mean, shit house mouse. I didn't know. <laughs> <You> know? <laughs> yeah, that's funny you say that because, you know, when I, before I do an interview, I, I do my homework and all that. And I watched that video last night and I was like, damn, I don't remember seeing this on Headbangers Ball. I remember the first two videos you had, but I didn't, re I didn't remember that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it, it, I actually like it. I like that video. I like what they did. It's just rogue, you know, mm -hmm. filming his live and and uh, some stuff in the uh, uh, in the hotel and it was cool. I love that song and it charted. I mean, I think it was a top forty. It song, so who knows? Who would have who would have thunk? You know, was the uh, like for that album? Was the trajectory kind of halted as grunge came in? Do you think that that album suffered from grunge creeping in? No, you know, I have my own sentiments. When people say grunge and rock is dead and they killed metal, hair metal or whatever, I say cock the shit, shut the fuck up, because <laughs> you know that had nothing to do with it. It had to do with oversaturation. Yeah. People getting bored of being fed shit that really wasn't up to par. I mean, look, you know, uh, you had your quiet riots, your rats, your motleys, your Van Halen kicked the door in in late 70s, and we just followed suit. So all these other bands in the 80s, you know, that had success, God bless them, you know, but a lot of them didn't. That's why I say a lot of them are, are those bands are being played more than ever, you know. 
but I, I got to say, uh, yeah, a lot of that has nothing to do with grunge. It just has to do with, you know, people following orders at the record. I mean, at the the radio level, you know, mm-hmm. the whatever you say, you know, now we're not going to add, you know, uh, the new single by Rat because Rat's been around forever and there's a new band called Up Your Ass. They got a new <laughs> single, you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, they gave us a pound of blow, so let's play them, you know. <laughs> 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 payola payola days my friend <laughs> that's how it worked right oh we we haven't even begun to talk about some stories and backstage past <laughs> you guys gotta check out the band platinum overdose it's new hair metal with the classic 80s sound their new album back for the thrill made sleaze rocks top 10 albums of 2020 and it's just killer. Go to ddrmusicgroup.com or platinumoverdose.com and check it out. Hey guys, this podcast takes a lot of time and effort. I want to do more in-depth projects on here, but I can't do it without your help. Just Google 80s Glam Metal Cast on Anchor. Once there, hit the support button and you can donate 99 cents, $4.99 or $9.99 a month. Your support will ensure that this podcast will be rocking out for years to come. Thanks for listening. Another cool video that comes to mind, and, and I know a lot of people love this song because you see it popping up on Twitter and, and social media, is Nobody Rides for Free. And the video, yeah. it's like a, you know, it's kind of a moody rocker. And the video, you guys are got the toned down image. And I remember at that time thinking like, okay, this is what the next Rat album is going to be like, you know. Was there ever talk of like, mm-hmm. oh, we got to do an album of this style? Or, just, or did the band just fall apart at that point? No, you know what happened was we were presented the movie and then the song. Uh, somebody else pretty much wrote the, the song. We just didn't like the way... It sounded, and, and knowing us, you know, Warren, myself, and, and everybody, we just didn't buy it. We just went, well, we've got to make it our own. So we had a little, uh, uh, a couple little throwbacks doing that. And even today, it should have been, some particulars in the business should have been handled. But the song is great. People mm-hmm. love that song yep. live. The movie is was cool. Um uh, just another one of those things that rap did, you know, like uh, po- uh, not just Point Break, uh, you know, the Eddie Murphy film. Yeah, and, Golden uh, Child, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Golden Child, and then we did a few other ones, I believe. Yeah, the Wanted Man was in uh, something or whatever. So we just see it as like, okay, there's a song in a, in a movie, uh, but we get to, you know, mess with this song. And then the fact that it wasn't our song kind of bugged us. But, hey, you had an opportunity and, and nobody paid us a fortune. We just wanted to do it, you know. Well, speaking of movie themes like View to a Kill, what about View to a Thrill? Yeah. You got it's a great album. And one thing that really stands out to me is um, Not Killing Me uh, with Robbie a Krieger yeah. on it. What was it like working with him, man? Are you a Doors fan deep down or what's going on? Oh, you don't even know how close that band is. But, uh, yeah, that was really interesting how that came about. I had met him at a party at uh, uh, the guy from Alice in Chains. Okay, the guitar player has these birthday parties. And, and I went there with my girl. And I, I ran into him. I, I, I saw him and I go, hey, you know, I've, I've met you're a keyboard player and and you know i've met so and so i've never really met you but we had the same publicist actually uh him and i and i asked him just for shits and giggles i go hey i'm doing a record right now would you like to play play on it do a solo (laughs) and he's like sure i was like are you fucking kidding me (laughs) yeah okay uh, uh here it is and and you know i gave him the song we thought eric and i would suit him he he took that song and played a solo and slide top to bottom all the way through mm-hmm. and it said here you go and we were just so blown away we didn't even know what to do there was so much talent in this his his uh yeah, execution on that song, but it was brilliant. I mean, he was great, and I ended up jamming with him at, at the Whiskey uh, not too long after that, but it was a great experience. I mean, come on, one of the doors, All right. 
and he's kicking ass on that song. And that record, you know, we got a little, I got to go a little outside. That's what I love about my solo projects. I get to do music that I like and, and not just the rat formula, so to speak, because there is a rat formula. Sure. We know what not to write and what people will, whatever, but we also want to graduate. I, you can only talk about pussy party and paycheck for so long, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, uh, so we had fun on that, but Robbie Craiger, yeah, brilliant. Actually, uh, an amazing, amazing guy. Brilliant guy. That's Great, awesome. but, Great guitar player, amazing slide guitar player, one of the best. Yeah, it was a cool pairing, and you know, you just think of the Doors, man. They're like the original uh, L.A. Bad Boys, you know, especially Jim Morrison. But sure. what a what a cool freaking band. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, <laughs> this is how ironic that is. My association with V.H. and Ed, it all started at Gazzari's, you know, when Bill Gazzari, I did an interview earlier, and the guy was like, uh, Gary was saying. Yeah, you know, what did Bill Gazar used to say in his radio ads? And I go, I'll tell you exactly what he said. He said, hi, this is Bill Gazar, the godfather of rock and roll. You'll only see the greatest bands on my stage. The same stage where the doors, Van Halen and Rat started. Ah, nice. I mean, there you go. I mean, not even the whiskey. The, the doors had to graduate from Gazari's to the whiskey, too. It's almost like something you had to do. So we did the same thing, you know. What's incredible, man. I mean, it's brilliant, this association. So I was like, God, Robbie Krieger, Gazari's Whiskey, Rat, you know, whoa, this is just too much, you know. If you don't take advantage of this, you're blowing it. So hence we have, uh, you know, a brilliant slide guitar solo on uh, that song. Uh, it's legendary stuff, man. Well, lastly, I just want to throw this out there. I mean, less people are living under a rock. They don't know this, but right now, Rat is on the current version of Rat is on a hiatus, and you're pretty much sta yeah. stating that if you're going to do another Rat album, you want the original guys on there. That's pretty much where it stands with Rat, right? Um, with Rat, yeah, I will not do another record. There's no way in hell. I'm giving uh, D Martini and everybody just courtesy. You know, why would I do that? You know, uh, there's no reason. We tried, you know, with Infestation. I mean, people go, that's a great record. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, that's because it was the only thing that we were able to give you. You know, if there was Juan in there, if there was Robin in there, if there was, uh, you know, the original guys, Nucleus, you would have gotten a better record. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. That's just the way it works because as dysfunctional or functional as we are that's what makes our music and the fact that we were able to come up with some good songs you know carlos and i i mean look carlos cavazo was in the band for a bit he, we wrote the first two singles carlos and i mm -hmm. um eat me up alive and best of me so you know there you go right there it wasn't even really the a uh, true rat record so no disrespect, and you know the guys that played on it, but I mean I just wouldn't do that to to Rat, you know, to our to the brand. Uh, it wouldn't work. So you know we'll see what happens, but I will not do another Rat record, no, unless the original guys. I put the feelers out there, you know, who knows? Maybe the doorbell will ring. I, I ain't counting on it, but you know who knows? <laughs> now would you like you mentioned Carlos? Would you ask him to be involved again, or would you go without? Um, I really don't know. That would uh, that's a bridge that is so far out there. You know, sure. I, I, I still have unfinished business with Warren. We started working on some uh, songs, actually tracking. We actually tracked one song that I liked so much. I, I pretty much made him go in the studio. Here, let's go into MT Studios. we got to cut this song. So there are some unreleased songs out there that Rat did that I want to see released, and I hope this year. Otherwise, I'm just going to put them out there so people can listen to it. It You're doesn't right. bother me, you know. Yeah, and he's somebody that you just, he's awful quiet. I don't think he does social media or any of that stuff. So for as a fan, you don't really know what's going on with the guy. No, I don't either. But, you know, I know he's not sitting there twiddling his thumbs. The guy's <laughs> a fucking great guitar player, you know. Uh, you know, I'm sure he's, you know, doing his thing. He's He's creative. He can write. So, I mean, shit, if I got a hold of any of his riffs right now, we'd have a record. 
you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, speaking of social media, do you like all that interaction that you get with these fans? Because it's a media interaction. Yeah, I think it's part of the course, and it has been, and and especially for the newer bands who aren't able to, you know, do the real deal. I mean, put it this way: a lot of these bands coming up now, and you know, we'll never see a gold or a platinum record. Right. They'll see a million streams. I don't know what kind of award they have for that, but <laughs> you'll make a buck. You know, you can make a buck or two. Um, but as far as, you know, those days are over and it's a drag, you know, it really sucks for some of these new guys. And the answer to that is I am, I, like I say, you've got to embrace it. I, I do to a certain degree. If there's something going on, I mean, I'd rather show up a pictures of my dog you know <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but uh yeah our animals and what we got going here but <laughs> we're very busy and it takes social media to get the word out so we embrace that too you know if you don't you're you're gonna be left behind you know exactly well hey man this has been awesome what do you want to say to your fans in closing out there well i mean the show that i'm going to be doing on april 2nd uh 2021 is going to be at the world famous whiskey it's going to be a way different approach to what streams i've seen concerts out there i want it to be personal i want it to be like i can slap five and and make jokes and have fun and and you know not just get up there okay good evening watch our stream thank you it's not going to be like that um and you know who knows one two guests i don't know who's going to show up uh we'll see but it's going to be a great thing it's a front row seat it's going to be different and hope you you know Come join the party. Ten dollar front row seat. It's like the seventies again. <laughs> That's that sounds pretty reasonable. Man, thanks for all the great music. It was an honor to speak with you. You got it, man. Keep in touch, brother. Well, that was a trip talking with Steven. Now I know a lot of you guys listen, but you're not subscribers. So you got to hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss all the fun that's coming up. Lots of cool stuff is on the way. Thanks for listening. Rock on!